everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of The County Seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. You know, over the six years of doing this program, we have heard about a lot of summits uh, that deal with public lands. A large majority of them are by nonprofit organizations such as the Sutherland Institute or you know different grassroots organizations like Take Back Utah that have sponsored these events to help inform people about public lands. However, the one we're going to talk about today was actually sponsored by a county and it was open to the entire region to get clarification on what the status of public land law is, was, and could be. Here with an introduction to that summit is Cameron Porter. The Public Lands Summit, an event that all who attended were happy to be at, but who also wish that it didn't need to exist. Public lands issues are far more complicated than most of us understand. And really only those who work on or around public lands on a daily basis experience the spider web of problems that surround them. The Public Land Summit was designed for these people to share information and strategies to help them fight the battles that need to be fought. Well, this is the first of this kind. I've, I've been around and participated in a lot of these types of events. This is a, this is a great uh, venue, great forum to be able to, to discuss this sort of thing. Hopefully, you know, this continues and we start to build uh, some conversation going forward. You know, I think it's a unique opportunity. Uh, I think for us, while we have been, you know, always focused on Utah, uh, what we don't get a chance to do all the time is to discuss with uh, folks from our neighboring states and to coordinate those efforts. And I think that was a unique opportunity uh, dealing with, with folks out here in Nevada that, that really are fighting the same battles that we are. There are a number of issues surrounding public lands, wild horses, land management, grazing, multiple use, and conservation are all terms that will get a scowl out of even the most cheerful rancher. What the Public Land Summit offered ranchers and county officials was accurate information, tools to get their voice heard, and most importantly, awareness that they are not fighting this fight alone. Sometimes it's very easy for you know, our ranchers, our county commissioners, etc., to, to feel like they're fighting this giant behemoth by themselves. and. Sometimes all it really takes is the recognition that, hey, so is this other county commissioner, so is this other Senate office, so is this other congressional office, this other rancher, and it's in that exact same position. And once we realize that that's it, it makes it uh, an easier thing to tackle. This particular summit was interesting because it was about what we could do as elected officials, what you know we could do as citizens um, to be able to influence policy, to direct policy, um, you know, how to get our message out. There was a variety of different topics discussed um, and, you know, how to leverage our voice in, in these issues. So, you know, overall, it, it was more of a tools of the trade, so to speak, conversation. The presentations at the summit included a history of public lands legislation and how we got to where we are today, advice and strategies for getting their voices heard through the media and online, and ways to work within the current system to improve their situations. That overall presentation of the, the legalities of how we got here, where we're at, yes, the Constitution says this, but based on all the different court cases, this is where we're at. And we have to recognize that and work within that and work to change things so that it's better for us as local governments and, and the people who live in these counties and so forth. But we need to understand there's what we're working with. So what precipitated the Public Land Summit? How did it go? What is its future? We'll answer these questions and more when we return and join our guest panel. For the County Seat, I'm Cameron Porter. Well, now you've got an idea of what took place on the summit. Maybe if you're in public lands, you regret not being there, but we'll make up for that when we interview the people who put the program together when we come back on the county seat. Stay with us. We'll be right back. There is a place where looking out means looking in, where an impression lasting only a few seconds will be imprinted on a life forever, where courage is forged and innocence rediscovered, where remembering is rewarding and forgetting unforgettable. There is a place where truth is felt and where seeing is believing there is a place. Color, 
It's something that can be seen. But have you ever wanted to reach out and touch it? Experience it. In San Juan County, Utah color comes to life like nowhere else on earth. Color can be more than an abstract. Color can be your gateway to a new world. Visit San Juan County and explore the past, present, and future in a way that you've only dreamed of. San Juan County. Color. Your experience. Let's be honest. You don't know much about Beaver County. Well, let me tell you about it. It's the birthplace of outlaw Butch Cassidy and adventure Philo T. Farnsworth. Some of the best skiing in Utah is at Eagle Point. You've got camping, Canyon Breeze Golf Course, Crusher and the Tushers, Beaver Territorial Courthouse, Snowmobiling, Renewable Energy, Pioneer Car Show, Squeaky Cheese, Ghost Town to Explore, Best Water in the Country, Paiute ATV Trails, Old Frisco Kills, Horse Races, Hunting, Fishing, and it's a good place to live. Beaver County, mountains of fun. I could tell you more, but why don't you come and see it for yourself? Welcome back to the county seat. A time to introduce our guests on today's panel. We have we have Brock Belknap, who is the county attorney for the Washington County down here in St. George, where we are for the show. And we have Celeste Malloy, who is the deputy county attorney. So if I make it out of the room, you know, without shackles on, I'm doing really well today. Anyway, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So, so I would like to uh, I would basically like to kind of go over a. Um, a why. Why did we put on this summit, uh, this land summit for the West? Public lands issues are front and center right now in the media. There's a lot of tension all over the West between public lands users and public lands managers. And several people in the state felt like it was important to get good information, correct information from credible sources out in front of the public because there's no shortage of information about public lands law, public lands policy, what rights public lands users have. And it's hard for the public to tell which information is credible, who to believe, who to listen to. So we tried to set up a program of really credible experts and give people answers to the questions that all of this media raises. So let me ask you a question. As a county attorney, and, and there being a lot of public land issues in Washington County right now, particularly with the with the land bill, and then you've got this new management plan that kind of goes contrary to That's it. Right. A whole ball of wax there. Has your office been getting calls for clarification? Oh, our office is in the middle of land use issues all the time. You know, three quarters of Washington County's land is public land of one kind or another. And the interaction that people have with the public lands and with private lands is at the forefront of what we're doing all the time. And we know people here in Washington County and in the rural Southwest who are great people, who have lived on the land for many, many years, worked it, um, their family livelihoods are there, and they're experiencing change and frustration. And the, the Public Land Summit of the West was designed to provide for those folks, folks that we know who are good people who want to try to do what's right but are confused and undergoing anger and concern and seeing their livelihoods change, to give them an opportunity to hear from non-biased, credible experts, things that they can do to help them as they try to deal with the changing face of public lands. And it's changing. The, the world is a different place today than it was 25 years ago. And we're all living with it here in Washington County. I would argue it's significantly different in the West than it was 10 years ago. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Maybe even five. Right, exactly. Yeah. So uh, was there already a flow of people seeking correct information? Because I, I, even as well versed as I am in a lot of these topics, I get it. I mean, I get bombarded with, here's here's a truth and reality over here, and here's a truth and reality over here, and and it just seems like everything's being tugged apart. So, was there already a demand for this coming into your office? People seeking clarification. 
Yes. The short answer is yes. The long answer is that people are attending classes or talking to their neighbors or relatives, whoever that is attending classes, um, and they have questions and they hear things that sound exciting and some of them are more exciting than the truth. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes there are easy answers out there that just aren't correct answers. And I was getting a lot of calls. I think anybody who's practicing law in any natural resources related area is probably getting a lot of questions. And so there's a need for answers. And this was a good centralized way to do it? Yes. How was the attendance? I think uh, we ended up with a total of about 140 people there, which is a good number. And from all over the West? And we had attendees. We, we had a lot of Utah and Nevada attendees because that's what we're close to. But we also had attendees from Wyoming, Idaho, Oregon, Washington, Arizona, and I think even New Mexico. So it demonstrates that the problems we're having in Utah are not necessarily unique problems. No, they're west-wide problems. Okay, we've only got a few minutes here together today. The summit was an, was an all-day thing, so I'd like to kind of wrap up and when we come back from commercial break, target on some of the really important issues and categorize them. And we'll be back with the county seat in just a minute. Kanab. Base camp for your Southern Utah adventures. You belong in Kanab. There's a little place on a Utah map. I was raised where my heart's at, where the sagebrush grows wild and high, and the stars come out at night. Oh, there ain't nothing like being raised in the basin with the Ute Reservation, skin starvation, that Duchesne County life. Shopping in Davis County has never been better. Experience Station Park, Northern Utah's premier gathering place for shopping, dining, and entertainment. With over 100 shops, Station Park is something for the whole family. Or explore the shopping possibilities this season under one roof at the Layton Hills Mall. Both are conveniently located north of downtown Salt Lake, just off I-15. Come take advantage of special discounts and a wide selection of stores. Visit PlayInDavis.com for more info. Welcome back to the county seat. We are talking about the public land summit that took place in Las Vegas a little bit earlier this year and we're talking to the key instigators of it from Washington County Attorney's Office. Um, I, I want to toss out on the table, um, I, I said we, you know, we should prioritize the highlights of the conference. What was the most important thing you guys talked about there? I'm going to give you two answers because I think it's a tie. Uh, the, the very first thing on the agenda was a summary of public lands law, sort of the history of how it developed, ending with where we are now. And that was one of the main things that we wanted to accomplish by holding a summit, was give people an idea of what public lands law really is, what it says, what it does, um, because that's what a lot of the misinformation is about. And then we also had a segment talking about telling your story and sort of owning your own story so that it doesn't get spun to be something that it isn't. And I think that's one of the areas where public lands users and those of us who are really invested in public lands policy do a poor job a lot of times is telling our stories and why this matters so much. And because they're public lands, it's important for the public to have the full picture and to understand 
why, why these issues are so emotional in the West, why grazing matters so much, why access and recreation on public lands are issues that stay on the front page of the newspaper all the time. What, what's your take on it, Brock? Well, I just want to second everything Celeste said, and I think we want to acknowledge and give a great thanks to Dean James Rasband from BYU Law School, who came down and um, gave us the instruction. You know, he, he has written a well-renowned textbook that's used in law schools across the country on natural resources law, and there's not a, not a better expert to come and, and give us the lay of the land is how the law is developed and where it's currently at. And then the gentleman from Washington, D.C., who came out and presented on basically PR and how to tell your story, interact with the public, because of his passion for the issues, he came out and did it as well. So those were tremendous uh, presentations that had a lot of value, I think, to people who wanted to hear them. So, and, you, and it is precisely a point that was going through my head, where there are some people there that were listening to what you're saying, knowing it was right, going, no, 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 no. I don't think so. I. I don't think people who don't want to hear the truth travel to Las Vegas to go to a summit. The, we, we had the agenda and the bios of the presenters on the website where people went to register. I think anyone who wasn't interested in hearing what was going to be presented wouldn't have been there. So you guys are well versed in this, obviously. I, I mean, it's not, well, it might be more of your special, but I mean, you, you have a broad range of obligations as a, as a county attorney. That's right. This is a lot of them, but it's not exclusively. Um, were, were there any points in this whole series on public lands law that raised your eyebrows like, wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm, I'm sad to say, no, that didn't happen. <laughs> uh, and, and partly the reason it didn't is because we are kind of immersed in it. And I have a great team like Celeste and the other members of our team. And I mean, we're, we're wrestling with this stuff all the time. And so part of, part of the reason for the summit was for us to share with other folks some of the realities of dealing with public lands issues. And that's what I think the summit accomplished that was very good. And you know, you mentioned where there's some people who might not have wanted to hear the message. Everybody there wanted to hear the message because it's their livelihood. They're, they're passionate about it. These are people who care about it deeply. But there were parts of the message that were frustrating to them. I mean, they, they are um, looking for answers that may not be easy answers. And so we had to speak to them some of the difficult truths of how the law has evolved and the circumstances they're facing, but then hopefully give them tools to manage it and deal with it in a uh, realistic way that can be beneficial and not harmful there, to them. There are, going to be two, there are going to be two sets of thoughts that are going through people's minds right now, particularly people who are interested in these issues. One of them is, okay, are, are we dealing with how we have to deal with the realities of today or is any of this on how we go about effectively changing it? Because I'm sure some of the people who are involved in, at, at the ground level, so to speak, in some of these public land issues are at a point where they're not thinking that they can manage it anymore. The summit was designed to address both of those. I mean, we had congressional representatives there to help with addressing the, the changing the laws and effectively lobbying and making and getting your points across. And then we also had people there to teach about how to tell our stories appropriately and to get the information to the public and help um, make sure that our stories are accurately told. But then we also dealt with the realities of the law and what goes on in the courtroom and what the law is. And so both of those were subjects that were talked about. Sorry, Celeste. And we had Karen Bud Fallon there, and she is sort of the public lands lawyer in the West, and she's been doing this for a long time. I'm she gonna... talked about the things that she's done and learned and, and how it's not easy. Yeah, well, she, she is definitely, anybody that knows public lands knows Karen's name. It just keeps coming up, so. Um, what was one of the other topics? What, uh, w w getting this information out about reality, telling the stories in PR, there, this was a whole day seminar. What came next on that prioritized list? So on the really basic level of the realities and what we deal with, that was, it also helps with how to change policy. We had a rancher from Idaho who has some practical experience and Chad Reed, the Washington, or, sorry, Iron County Extension agent, talk about record keeping and taking repeat photos and having good data and better data wins in court and in the court of public opinion. And that's another area where we can usually improve is having 
good data, having the best data, and that helps influence policy. It helps influence the public perception. And part of what they also taught us was that you have to play the long game. You, make, you, do, you begin your documentation now. It's never too late. And then helping people understand that you have to stick with it and that, it can, and that change can be incremental, but you don't give up was part of the message as well. And was that depressing? Is that sunk into some people that they have to keep slogging away at this? Because, I mean, I listen to some of the stories that come off the range, and well, it's just it's just like last week's show. We had Ron Gibson on. He's he's a dairy farmer, Weber. He's president of the Utah Farm Bureau, and he was out looking at horses out in West Iron County. He lives in the state. He knows the issue. He never really understood until he stood out there and saw what the range condition was exactly how bad the problem is. And it was just like, holy smokes, how many horses are supposed to be out here? And then he counted more than were supposed to be on the range right in one, around one corner. That's part of figuring out how to tell our stories effectively mm -hmm. and also how to document and collect data effectively. And folks who may be on the side of saying we need to shut down grazing and tighten up land use, they have used those tools somewhat effectively while we have not. Well, people who want to preserve the ability to people, to, for people to have access to their lands have not been meeting those same standards with regard to the decision makers. And we're figuring out that we need to play in that same field as long as the law remains what it is right now. If this word gets out, you're gonna have some environmental organizations that aren't gonna be very happy with you. They're already <laughs> doing it. The, yeah. the environmental organizations are already really good at working yep. the data and telling their story, and we need to get better at it. I was going to say the last thing they want is the ranchers coming up with the same stuff. So um, we're going to take a quick break here. We're going to come back with the final thoughts. You're watching the county seat. We're having a conversation about the public land summit that took place in Las Vegas. We'll be right back on the county seat in just a minute. 149 million years in the making, dinosaurs once roamed this land. Now they're found at the Dinosaur National Monument. Let's take you beyond the bones. We call it Dinosaur Land. You'll find it offers adventures and sights not seen anywhere else in the world. Come to Dinosaur Land, Vernal, Utah. You'll want to stay forever. The dinosaurs did. What would you do with an extra day in Utah Valley? Explore the Wasatch Mountains? Snap a family photo at Bridal Veil Falls. Cool off on Utah Lake or the Provo River. No matter what you're searching for, you can find it in Utah Valley. Bring everyone together. The Utah Farm Bureau has always been there to fight for the needs of its members. With discount programs on items ranging from vehicles and ATVs to health and wellness. The membership fees aren't big, but the results are. We've been around since 1916, and we're not leaving anytime soon. Utah Farm Bureau. We work for those who work to feed the world. I'm a Utah's own dairy producer. I care about the health of my animals, and I care about the quality of food we produce. Because when it comes to providing quality dairy products, I understand the importance of Utah grown and raised. And the jobs we enjoy are vital, because Utah's own supports our communities. As a consumer, I look for Utah's own products, because Utah's own is good for me, and it's good for Utah. Keep it here at home, Utah's own. Welcome back to the county seat in Washington County today at the county courthouse. We are talking about uh, the public lands summit down in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, we've gotten some highlights from it and you know, I gotta tell you, I'm really sorry that I couldn't make it because it sounds like it was, uh, it was a, a, a great event. Um, how do I make up for it? We have a website. It's the same website where people registered for the summit. It's www.publiclandsummit.com and the raw footage of the summit is there as well, or will soon be there, as well as the presentations from, or the, 
as well as the PowerPoints uh -huh. from the presenters and the, their bios and anything you need to know about the summit you can find on our website. So basically, if we couldn't make it, if we invest a couple hours on the, well, a day on the internet, we can probably get caught up? It won't be the same as being there, but you'll get a lot of the same information. So you're going to do one again, you think? We did a survey at the end to gauge the interest in doing another one, and the, the overwhelming response was that people would like to see more summits, more events of this type where they can get information in a sort of unbiased expert you mentioned something a little bit earlier that was, was of interest to me. You, you talked about a rancher in Idaho that had shared some of his practical experience. Were there pockets of, of information like this that were forthcoming during this summit that really hadn't been uh, on the agenda but became really valuable to people? Did, it, did any of that show up uh, uh, as far as, oh yeah, well, I had this problem with my range con and I was able to blah, 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 blah. Well, there were lots of conversations taking place between the attendees, but it, I didn't really see it pop up in kind of a, as, as, the, as the presentations were unfolding so much. But we don't know what they were talking about. We know that it stimulated conversations and they were interacting and talking. Which is one of our goals in holding the summit, to get people who have similar problems to get together and share their solutions with each other. I wonder if the next one should have a couple of sessions like that with, with somebody of like Karen Bud Fallon's stature moderating something where people talk about, you know, brainstorm and, and, and share brainstorm ideas. a little bit. That That's would be fantastic. Idea. Well, I, <laughs> hopefully I came up with something helpful. I would certainly be there for that one. Um, any last thoughts or comments for our audience about, about how to how to go forward on this because I know some guys are in different counties in the state are just totally overwhelmed right now. My last thought would be these problems are bigger than any one person and they're going to take a lot of people working together to come up with solutions and finding solutions would require a lot of unity, a lot of patience and staying inside the law. And we'd encourage uh, local governments, small, smaller counties, rural counties, to, to reach out to us. We'll share the knowledge that we've gained. We'll work together collaboratively. Uh, we, and we invite people to reach out to us and, and so that we can share what we've gained. And we encourage people to, to, to do that. Uh, we, we think that that will, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with regard to your own local plan that will help you and your local constituents. Excellent. Well, you couldn't have set me up to close the show better than that, Brock. We want to thank you for inviting us into our home. We want to remind you, of course, as we do every week, that local government is where your life happens. Be involved, be part of the solution, and that means you're going to get a lot of calls uh, into the county attorney's office because Brock just invited you to call him. And we'll look for you next week on the county seat. If you'd like to share this video with your friends, well, you do that right here. If you would like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, you do that over here. If you'd like to interact with us on the county seat, that happens over here. If you want to watch the next episode of the county seat, you can catch it Saturday night at 11 or Sunday morning at 8.30 on ABC4, Good For Utah.